The next presentation is uh, titled Developer Journey in uh, Narrow Band IoT or NB IoT. So we have, we'll be having two people, two people in uh, this uh, segment and uh, both are from Mobitel. So we'll be having uh, the Senior Manager Network Strategy and Transformation for Mobitel, Dr. Shamil Appadure and also the Assistant Manager Product Service Innovation for Mobitel, Mr. Akalanka De Silva. And uh, they will be covering this, sh uh, this uh, subject, Developer Journey in Narrow Band IoT. Put your hands together in gem for Dr. Appadure and Mr. Akalanka De Silva. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Very good to be here. Really, really excited. I have to say I'm super impressed at the crowd. See, I don't think I've spoken in front of such a big audience before in my life. And uh, let's ho I hope this is memorable for you as it is for me. So I'm from Obitel, and I'm really excited to be here because we're talking about NBIoT. I will tell you what that means. But before I get into the talk, I just want to uh, a little bit of inspiration that came from Mr. Tony Virasinghe's talk. So, we talk a lot in 1996, uh, 22 years ago in March. Uh, it was a very uh, phenomenal day for Sri Lankans because we won the Cricket World Cup. And I don't know. For me, I was just into my adulthood then. Some of you may not have been born at that point, but. What that showed is that Sri Lanka being a little island, we can take on the rest of the world and do wonderful things. And today, what we want to talk about is how every one of you in this room, don't think about how I'm going to just serve Sri Lanka, but position yourselves to take on the world. I'm sure you can be successful. Mr. Tony Virasinghe has proved what, what can be done by Sri Lankans. And I hope with the assistance of Mobitel, you will also find that level of success going forward. So the first point I want to make is, this is almost like top secret, it has very rarely been shared. This, any one of you working in software development or technology, anything in the ICT industry, pretty much sit somewhere within these four architectures. You start with the user equipment, uh, which is no different to your phone. The next level up is what's known as the bearer network, and this is where Mobitel has been very, very strong over the last 25 years almost. You then have service enablers, which does analytics, identity, and so on and so forth. And as you go higher and higher into these layers, it becomes a lot more software dependent, which is where all of you play. And then you have things like API gateways, where you connect one protocol to another. And finally, on top, you have your applications. Now, as I said, Mobitel has been very, very strong in the bearer network. And why are we particularly strong and why not anyone or everyone can do that is because networks, unlike software, have to be physically present everywhere you wish to give service. So if we serve, we serve Sri Lanka and we have coverage island-wide. And this is, it's this simple phenomenon that we have this footprint and we are going to leverage this for your benefit and for the benefit of Sri Lanka and to put Sri Lanka on the global scale where we can tackle the big boys, whether they be in Silicon Valley or anywhere else in the world. Okay, so the first thing to say is, you must have heard about this, uh, IoT, Internet of Things. Uh, you've heard lots of talks. There was 50 billion projection of devices by 2030, so on and so forth, but I just took the GSMA stats because as mobile operators, we follow closely what the GSMA body does, and they claim that there are going to be 25 billion devices by 2025. Now, these devices split predominantly into two categories, which is consumer IoT, which would be like the smart homes and things like that, or industrial IoT, little passive machines that sit within a manufacturing plant or... Uh, an agriculture sector, anything that's done on a grand industrial scale. Now, this is where I want, if you can have your attention a little bit, what, we want to, uh, what I want to tell you about is that there are two things you need to be very careful about here. Anything and everything machine that connects one from another is, yes, machine-to-machine -machine communication, and it's IoT-based. But the level of 
bandwidth that each machine requires varies. So if a CCTV camera is also an IoT, but the bandwidth that requires, typically if it's an HD video stream, would require something like 4G or 5G technology to s continuously sustain that bandwidth. And as you come a bit lower, maybe you have smart watch. That requires maybe one Mbps, so that can be served pretty much by maybe uh, 3G technology. But what I'm here to talk to you about today is actually the passive, lowest, lowest level of sensor, something that sits and maybe transmits one message every 15 minutes. But this is where you get this grand scale of things. So those 50 billion devices, 67% of that is actually catered for by these tiny devices like smart meters, parking meters, gate signals, and things like that. Now, this is where we say that we, as Mobitel, have taken a decision that we are going to connect these devices on NB-IoT. Now, NB-IoT, not to be uh, mistaken with IoT, stands for narrowband IoT, and it's just another access technology. It's the same as saying LTE or UMTS or GSM. So narrowband IoT is what Mobitel has decided to roll out island-wide in Sri Lanka to service low-power generating and low bandwidth generating smart devices. Now, what does NB-IoT deliver in particular? The first thing is that it's catered specifically for long-lasting battery life. So we expect that a simple coin cell battery will last for 10 years on the device that you use for this. So you can just put the device and maybe throw it out in an agricultural field and forget about it because it should last for 10 years. The next thing is that it's designed specifically with a high receiver sensitivity. So if you take today's current Mobitel GSM footprint, we automatically get 20% deeper coverage by using the exact same base stations, exact same spectrum, and so on and so forth. So for example, right now we cater our devices mainly for you to take your phone call or use your LTE and surf the internet. But if you suppose, supposing you're catering to the smart meter and you have maybe uh, you're in the basement car park of a sky-rise building, it's very unlikely that you'll have very good signal there. But by using NB-IoT, you automatically get this 20 dB gain, and therefore you get a lot of signal in these typically unaccessible places, so ideal for smart meters and so on and so forth. The next thing is that a single cell potentially can latch 50,000 devices to a single base station. And cost is the other thing. Cost, of course, comes with uh, scale. So the more you manufacture, the lower the cost becomes. But at Mobitel, we're targeting devices of under $5. So think about you as young entrepreneurs, as technopreneurs. You know the technology side and get a little bit smart on your business side. See which numbers scale up to make your business case successful. As I emphasized before, this is not for high-speed communications, right? So this is not developed for CCTV or anything like that. It's not going to do automated driving and all that. That will come with the 5G technology. What we are doing here is for less than 100 kilobits per second, maybe a, an SMS-type message once every 15 minutes or so. There is bi-directional communication, and I'm told the next standard also gives a low level of triangulated uh, location accuracy. So it's not as good as GPS, simply because GPS draws a lot of battery, but this will allow you to get a, to, a, to about a, maybe a kilometer's range of location accuracy. The next point that this comes up with GSM is, so GSM signals, LTE signals, typically are very difficult to hack. It's very, very different to something like, say, Wi-Fi. I mean, if any of you are hackers or you messed around with Wi-Fi, you will know how vulnerable a Wi-Fi network is. And if you know how vulnerable a Wi-Fi network is, probably you shouldn't be logging into a Wi-Fi network if you've got sensitive data on your computer or your smartphone. I just want to say with security, the Security falls down with whoever is the weakest link. And very often, it's not that the technology was insecure, but the person operating it was somewhat careless. You know, sometimes we store databases anywhere and everywhere, and it's the database that gets hacked. It's not during the transmission that information gets hacked. So just remember that when you're talking about security. And finally, uh, this is backed by the 3GPP standard body. These are the guys who define what LTE would be like, what 3G would be like. And I just have a single slide 
on why the 3GPP standard is, is important. So there were technologies who were doing low power wide area networks. You might have heard of LoRa, you might have heard of Sigfox. We as Mobitel generally don't like that because they use unlicensed spectrum bands. So what's, what happens when you use an unlicensed spectrum band is you might design a very a good network for whatever business or operation you are going, but if your next door neighbor decides to use the same thing, you start getting interference and crosstalk. And as a result, all your performance levels drop. The, what, what mobile, why mobile operators can play this game is we spend huge, tremendous sums of money licensing spectrum in a country. The good thing about that is once that spectrum is licensed, nobody else can use it. As a result, we can guarantee a good quality of service because we have upfront paid that money. And this is where Mobitel is gradually building up almost like a platform level service for you because we don't expect you as young entrepreneurs to be able to fork out billions and billions of rupees for spectrum. Mobitel has taken on that burden and we hope that you can then come and ride on this network and be successful. Now, coming back to this uh, framework of architecture, what we've done now is we've enabled island-wide coverage of narrowband IoT. So Mobitel has invested almost $600 million on its network over the last 15 years. That averages around $40 million per year. So think about those numbers. This is there now. It's sitting out there. It's worth $600 million. And we want you to come and decide, design your application, come in and plug in with your sensor, and you're good to go. Now, there's something that you really need. OK. The cost of deployment of these networks takes this triangular formation. So the biggest cost in all these uh, layers is actually the network, and that's what Mobitel has deployed. The applications actually don't cost a lot. A very smart software developer can do that in his bedroom. It's not, it doesn't take a lot to do. However, the return on investment is exactly opposite. With the smallest amount of investment in your application, that's where the business comes, right? Everybody comes for that application type of content. Nobody cares about the network itself. So that's what Mobitel has decided. We know that. We understand the business case for that. But we are still very happy to put this, take that burden on our shoulders and provide you and Sri Lanka with the network, knowing full well that the return on investment is only about 3 to 5%, whereas you can come in with minimal investment. Perhaps it might even cost you less than 500,000 rupees, but your return on investment could be 30 to 40% of that. And we don't want to control this whole architecture. So I've spoken to other people in the industry, and they say, oh, we are technology agnostic. But please come and connect onto pl our platform. Remember very well, we have learned our lessons from the likes of Google and Facebook. You know, operators go out and put the physical network out there, and these OTT players come and play and take the biggest portion of that pie. Now, in, what I'm trying to say is in this next generation of ICT-related business, we don't want one single entity or one single company to be dominant in that. That's why Mobitel, while we could very easily invest in applications, we want you to do that, and we want you to be successful. We are just providing the basic infrastructure for you to do that. So finally, uh, j just to say what Mobi why we can do this so easily is that we've had a GSM network out for around 15 years now, and uh, with the latest technology, all we need to do is with software, we can actually change our base station to enable NB-IoT on top of its GSM and LTE. So that's why with our network footprint of so many base stations around the country, wherever you are, you inform us, we will make sure that you have NB-IoT connectivity. And this is on license spectrum, so there is no problem with interference. We have a, two approaches on how we feel that where the sensor part comes in. So if you're building a business, you can either go out and look for a sensor. This is a smoke detector. It's just as an example. But choose a, NBI, choose a sensor which has NB-IoT defined as the access technology on the sensor itself. If you have that, all you need to do is get a Mobitel SIM, and you're connected to our Inspire platform and you're good to go. You can then build your application on top of that. All these pieces are in place. However, 
we understand that NB-IoT-based sensors are not necessarily available. So go for the best of breed. There are some other sensor manufacturers who just do sensors very well, whether it be uh, power station, uh, sorry, weather monitoring or smart meters. Get your sensor, and Mobitel is in the process of developing an NB-IoT modem. So we will have the pin layout defined. All you need to do is take the best of breed sensor, plug in your NB-IoT modem, obviously with a Mobitel SIM, and you're again good to go. So you can get the best of Mobitel's NB-IoT network by using these two approaches. So this is what we hope to do in the next uh, couple of years. But going forward, we see that this NB-IoT will be adopted around the world to such an extent that half the battle is already won. So finally, what has Mobitel been doing? We've been ensuring that everybody understands whatever you do, make sure NB-IoT is your default access technology. Please do not go after these unlicensed spectrum bands. You will pay for it in time, and you will pay for it in money. We are doing our coverage testing, and we are partnering with uh, vendors who de develop the sensors for certification. And finally, we, through events like this, we are trying to develop the ecosystem, and you are the biggest part of that ecosystem. We can't achieve any of this without you. So like that Sri Lankan cricket team, let's put Sri Lanka on the map that we are the world beaters in IoT technology through NB-IoT, and just remember, Mobitel did this service for you where we provided our network as a platform for you to go and play and be successful. So that's me done, and I've got my colleague Akalanka coming along. He will get into the deep dive of how NB-IoT works from uh, the interface level. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shamil. Uh, and I feel happy and privileged to be the guy who comes between you and your wonderful piece of pizza in a very hungry moment. Uh, let me interest you in something very, actually it's in, in real life it's quite interesting. So uh, as Dr. Shamil elaborated, NB-IoT is a nice technology which enables you to connect stuff. So I won't go into technicalities, I won't use jargon. IoT is basically connecting different stuff. So when you're connecting stuff, you need Several aspects, like coming up with a good, good recipe. So, like any other recipe, you would need the ingredients. So, what are the ingredients? What are the good ingredients of IoT solution? Of course, you need a connector device. A connector device would have a controller, a modem, and somebody in the middle who would help you, who would connect, who would help to connect your device to your cloud platform who would be, incidentally, a telecommunication operator. So we, as Mobitel, are proud to uh, be there for you. And of course, you would need a cloud platform. So cloud platforms, microcontrollers, modems, all come in different flavors. There are many manufacturers. You have many choices out there where you can go for, depending on your taste, depending on your solution. I know most of you uh, might be hardware enthusiasts who have built, if, who have built uh, things based on Node MCU or ESP32. So most of, most of the stuff might be working pretty well as well. But as Dr. Shamil mentioned, if you're going for a true industrial solution, uh, Wi-Fi might not cut the chase. Why? Because you would need to lay out your own access network. You would need to lay out the Wi-Fi access points, which at home might be quite easy. You have a small Wi-Fi router, fine. But in a large, uh, large rollout, even here you might see several of up to, I think, 10 uh, Wi-Fi access points, which are pretty expensive. If you go for LoRa, it's going to be even more expensive. So why not let that investment be borne by the operator and go ahead with your product design? So uh, uh, first thing would be to choose the proper modem. Then uh, would the, your next ch challenge would be to uh, use the proper protocol. I won't go into, again, I won't go into details of what each protocol does here. Because again, PSI is important, right? So, COAP is something that, uh, that stands out in this cloud. Because you might have used HTTP, you might have used MQTT. For some, most of you, I think when you say IoT, okay, does it support MQTT? If no, I am not interested. But hear me out, guys. Uh, we have tested all of these protocols, and I will share a bit of the experience, my experience with you. 
Uh, well, we have all the articles that we have written uh, to help you as well. So uh, for a real low power application, a real thin application, you would like the protocol to have a very low overhead. Low overhead means you don't want to convey more information that you want to. But if you take HTTP, it will convey, it's a very verbose protocol based on text. Uh, your, uh, your HTTP message would be significantly larger than the, the actual information that you are trying to convey. If you are trying to convey a, a decimal value, two bytes, HTTP web header will take 200 bytes. A pretty loss, isn't it? But if you take a binary protocol like CoAP, it has a very low protocol overhead. And it is optimized for small messages so that you can have packet sizes which are smaller and still get the job done. And of course, for some, some, sometimes you would need some form of basic error control because you know always when you're talking, with, when you're talking about IoT, uh, when you're talking about connected devices, what you send over a network can get lost. Some of the information might get corrupted, some of them may not be delivered at all. So in that case, what would you need? Some form of simple error control and flow control. But in that, that also you would like to have it only when it is needed. Unlike TCP, which you do not have the choice of doing that. So why TCP suffers at a low bit rate, I have tried to convey here. And I will share a very uh, recent experience, uh, recent experience of mine. Uh, with NBIoT, I was uh, testing the coverage, and at very cover, low coverage level, uh, I was able to transmit a couple of bytes of data uh, over, uh, NB, over QAP using NBIoT, and the message transmission took over less than, less than five seconds, and it was done. But using HTTP, it took me sometimes on average 30 seconds. You see, 30 seconds, for an HTTP request, might look absurd. You, have not even, you might not have even seen that. But when, uh, when the coverage levels are low, when the uh, connectivity is very poor, and where you, when you're at the coverage edge, crazy things seem to happen. And that is one of the crazy things that I saw. So with CoAP, I was able to send the same thing 10 times faster. So you would see when everything is fine, when everything is good, you don't, you, you don't have the challenges. So you can use any protocol you like, but when you are really challenged, go for something that will take you, take you home. So uh, why we love CoAP is it's a binary protocol, it's very low overhead, and it has uh, selectively turning on. You can selectively turn on the error control and flow control as well, so it, it is very flexible. It relies on UDP on transport, so you don't have get the nice features of TCP, but uh, then again, you get the flexibility for that. And it offers something called asynchronous message exchange. I'm sure this is too small and you are not interested in it at all, but uh, I would like to give you the highlight. So usual, in a usual request, uh, you say in a usual request response model, you send the request and you wait for the response. But in CoAP, that is also there, but in addition, it gives you a synchronous messaging model. In a synchronous messaging model, what happens is you send the message, and the response can be deferred by the server to be sent to the receiver when it is ready. So when you are, if you send a message which requests a resource-intensive task to be done, the server will respond to you after that task is completed. So your, resp your request does not hang until the server completes your resource-intensive task. So asynchronous messaging is slightly more complex. I think uh, those of you who are familiar with Node.js will, uh, will be already be familiar with this type of programming, but Coap also supports this paradigm. So uh, if you don't like Coap, still Coap is a bit strange. If you think it's ugly, if you think it's uh, uh, if, you, if you don't like the look of it, still we can help you out. Uh, Actually, we conducted uh, Sri Lanka's first industry forum for NBIoT more than one month back. And what we did was we concluded a hackathon on the same day uh, for very innovative team. We had several in a very innovative teams, over 20 teams participating, and we offered them 
a service from our Inspire developer platform where uh, we took the burden of carrying your Aquap messages to the cloud, to your cloud, not ours, so that you, the completely the burden of programming the device and taking the device uh, messaging to the cloud is taken off your hands. So you can have your nice uh, application server uh, at the end, which will talk on a conventional protocol like M so MQTT or HTTP. Our messaging server will do the protocol translation for you, so that you can still you can still have the nice lightweight protocol while not having to do a single bit of coding or learning the new protocol by yourself. Because remember, guys, uh, as Dr. Shamil explained earlier, if you are building a device, uh, if you, especially if it's a battery-operated device, your power consumption is going to be very, very a critical factor. You have to take care, to take care in designing your device, and all the nice features that you get in NBIoT, remember, they don't come automatically. Uh, bad design can destroy all of those uh, nice advantages in, a, in one shot. So always be careful when designing your device to make sure that it lasts more on battery. So choosing the right protocol is also part of good design. So uh, that's it, guys. Uh, uh, visit our GitLab, so we have put some code coding for you to uh, familiarize yourself with uh, several NBIoT modems, uh, the BC95 and SIM7000. So those are the uh, two popular modems that are out there for you to integrate into your device. And you can visit our blog as well, blog.inspire.lk, where there are many articles on how to build low-power devices and how to uh, basically integrate your device to the cloud. So hope you will connect with us and wish you all a pleasant Google I.O. extended. Thank you.